Dune Part 2 will officially introduce us to Fade Ratha. Dune 2's Austin Butler teases a complex villain and reveals his intense SEAL training for the movie. Furthermore, James Cameron believes that Avatar 2 is the reason people are going to theaters again. The original Cloverfield director addresses potential return and more. Stay tuned so you don't miss a thing. Let's start with Dune 2's Austin Butler teases a complex villain. Austin Butler is known for his work in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as Tex Watson and his impressive portrayal of the king of rock and roll in Baz Luhrmann's musical biopic Elvis. And he's also one of the few newcomers that will join the upcoming Dune Part 2 cast. In the latter half of Denis Villeneuve's adaptation of Frank Herbert's 1965 novel of the same name, Butler will take up the role of Fade Ratha, who is the nephew of Baron Vladimir Harkonnen and his supposed successor on Arrakis. Butler talked about his character and the preparation he went through for the role in an interview with Backstage, teasing the villain's complex nature. It's that thing of the bad guy in the world doesn't feel like he's the bad guy. He feels like he's the hero of his own story, the actor explained. Or in other words, even if he's not the main character, Butler's Fade Ratha is still the main character, at least in his own story. Extrapolating from Butler's comments, it seems like Vilnav and him have tried to create a much more complex version of the Dune villain, with a lot more redeeming qualities and heroic motivations than was offered in David Lynch's 1984 adaptation of the novel, in which Fade Ratha was portrayed by Sting. Here's to hoping that Butler's portrayal of Fade Ratha will be just as spectacular as his turn as Elvis, for which he recently was nominated for a Golden Globe, not to mention the serious Oscar buzz, by the way, following Austin Butler reveals his intense SEAL training for the movie. While it's clear that Austin Butler's Fade Ratha will have more to him than just his looks, it can't be disputed that his looks are an important part of his character. In the same interview with Backstage, the actor went into detail about how he looked for the help of actual Navy SEALs to help him get his body into shape in time to shoot Dune Part 2. Butler explained that there were several challenges when it came to approaching his character, certain physical things in particular. I worked with this Navy SEAL who trained me for months beforehand just to get my body into a place where it was available to not only be an imposing physical presence, but do whatever was asked of me, Butler noted. According to the actor, training went on for at least four months, on top of all the other commitments he had. Butler also underwent special knife training to be able to handle a very specific scene in the movie. He added that it was very interesting to have this experience while also doing press for Elvis, which meant that he had all these press events during the day in promotion for Elvis and then trained at the end of the day for Dune Part 2. This just goes to show how absolutely committed Butler is to all his work and adds to the anticipation of the upcoming Dune sequel. Next up, James Cameron believes that Avatar 2 is the reason people are going to theaters again. The creator of the Avatar franchise, James Cameron, believes that his latest success, Avatar The Way of Water, is getting people off of Netflix and back in theaters again. The Way of Water is set a decade after the events of the original movie and follows the family that Sam Worthington's Jake Sully and Zoe Saldana's Neytiri have built together through the years that have passed, while also bringing back Stephen Lang's Korich as the story's main antagonist. The highly anticipated sequel also continues the attack on Pandora by human colonizers, while the Na'vi desperately try to keep their planet safe from the merciless invaders. Cameron admitted in an interview with Variety that he truly believes that the box office success of Avatar The Way of Water signals people's return to theaters en masse and could point towards a shift. At the moment, The Way of Water is well on its way to grossing well over $2.5 billion, proving it has gotten both domestic and international audiences back into the theaters. Most people who have gone out to see the Avatar sequel in theaters went because of the movie's reputation as the ultimate cinematic experience with exceptional visual effects. And after years of people all over the world avoiding theaters due to the pandemic, it's exciting for cameras 
Cameron to see that his movie has brought people back out and away from streaming. Just in time to remember that going to the movies is an experience and shows the movie exactly as it's supposed to be seen with a huge screen and perfect sound. Do you think streaming could ever truly take the place of cinemas? Stop right there. Don't you dare think of leaving. We've got a lot more in store for you. Next, original Cloverfield director addresses a potential return. Why did Andy Serkis almost turn down his villain role in Luther? And Guillermo del Toro defends animation as cinema at the Golden Globes. Want to get all the details? Make sure to keep watching until the end of the video. Now, let's get to it. First up, original Cloverfield director addresses potential return. Matt Reeves, the director of the original Cloverfield movie, has revealed whether he would be open to returning to the franchise. While 2008's Cloverfield was a massive success, no direct sequel to the movie was ever made. It also took eight whole years for another movie to be released in the franchise. By the time 10 Cloverfield Lane was released, it was 2016, which was followed by the poorly received The Cloverfield Paradox, which was released in 2018. Reeves spoke with comicbook.com for the 15th anniversary of Cloverfield, where he was asked whether he would ever consider coming back to the franchise for another movie. In his response, the director not only hinted at a sequel, but confirmed his own excitement for the possibility of a sequel as well. While he admitted that he had no idea whether it would actually happen, he said, I'm super excited about us doing more, and I can't give you more information about that, of course, because that's the way Cloverfield works. He added that, in order for the director to get interested in a project, there has to be something personal about it for him. Cloverfield was very much about his anxieties as well. In short, if another story were to be presented to him and Reeves feels the need to tell the story, he won't say that it's a sure thing, but he would never say never either. Would you like to see a direct sequel to 2008's Cloverfield? Next up, why did Andy Serkis almost turn down his villain role in Luther? Luther, the fallen son, features the one and only Andy Serkis as the movie's antagonist, sharing the screen with the Luther series star Idris Elba, who plays John Luther. Luther, the fallen son, is a feature-length follow-up movie to the finale of the Luther series, a TV series that ran for five seasons on BBC in the United Kingdom. But the movie almost had to look for another villain, as Circus seriously considered turning down the role. The actor confessed what his first response to the character was in an interview with Total Film, revealing that the script for the upcoming follow-up to the series was so dark and twisted that he actually contemplated passing on the role entirely. When I first read the script, I almost wanted to throw it in the bin and have a shower. I don't think I've come across anything quite as dark for a long time, Circus said. Apparently, the things his character has to do are so vile, the actor just wasn't sure if he really wanted to go down such an unfathomable rabbit hole. Circus will portray David Roby in Luther, The Fallen Son, a millionaire who is said to be tapping into zeitgeist fears of big tech by spying on consumers and the existence of the dark web. Through the use of tech, the villain spies on others with the sole goal of collecting secrets and information that he can then use to manipulate them. If anything, Circus's villain seems to be a villain with a clear purpose. The actor's comments on his characters are the first real details that have been revealed about the character, and they sure make one wonder. And lastly, Guillermo del Toro defends animation as cinema at the Golden Globes. Guillermo del Toro decided that his acceptance speech during the Golden Globes was the perfect time to take a stand and defend animation as cinema. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio was released by Netflix in November 2022 to widespread critical acclaim, with the movie currently being able to brag about a 97% in the tomato meter on Rotten Tomatoes. Del Toro is most popularly known for being a master of horror, but the director has also proven himself to be a champion of and for animation. After all, he did build an entire Troll Hunters trilogy of TV series for Netflix as well, titled Tales of Arcadia. Was anyone really surprised when Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio won the Golden Globe for Best Animated Feature Film? The acclaimed director climbed the stage to accept the award, at which moment 
moment he decided to defend animation as a valid form of cinema. Animation is cinema, the director stated. Animation is not a genre for kids, it's a medium. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio was made with the use of stop motion, which is arguably the hardest medium in film to work with. It's also what set del Toro's take on the story, apart from the other two movies, about the story that were released last year. It goes without saying that del Toro put his heart and soul into this project, and the award is well earned. Hopefully, we'll learn to appreciate his view on animation a little more in the time to come. And that's all we've got for now. How do you think Austin Butler will do portraying Fade Ratha? Will his Navy SEAL training have been worth it? Let us know in the comments what you think. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more. Thanks for watching.